Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. In this video, I'm going to discuss differential analysis. So differential analysis, so some important terminologies we need to learn before we proceed. Decision-making, what is decision-making? Decision-making involves two or more alternatives, choosing between them, right? So if you don't have any choice, you have to do something regardless, then you're not making any decision. You will, you will do this, right? But if you have alternatives, you can choose alternative A or B, then you are making decision. If you decide to work for employer A or employer B and you need to make decision which employer you choose, then it's a decision making. If you're hiring someone, do you hire worker A or worker B? That's decision making. If you decide to go to school or you decide to go to work, decision making. You decide to go to school or you don't decide to go to school, that's decision making. Do you want to wake up at eight o'clock or do you want to wake up at seven o'clock? That's decision making. So whenever you have uh, multiple choices, two or more, then you make decisions. Now, differential revenues and costs. Differential revenues and costs are differences in revenues or the differences in costs. That's differential revenue. Now that these differences can be an increase in revenue or a decrease in revenue or an increase in cost and a decrease in cost. That's differential revenue on cost, right? Whereas incremental revenue comes under differential cost, right? Incremental revenues is basically should be increase in revenues and increase in cost only. It should be just one way. The street, as the name suggests, incremental revenues. Although many books discusses that, that the incremental revenues is also a decrease in revenues and decrease in costs, which doesn't go with the name itself as incremental revenues, but it's still known as an incremental analysis, even though uh, the cost is decreasing, which should be a decremental analysis in that case. So incremental revenues and incremental um, uh, costs are differential revenues and differential costs from an understanding point of view. So what is differences in revenues and cost? Differences in revenues, I'll give you a, a general example other than a manufacturing company so you can understand these concepts easily. Uh, you are planning to work for, you are working for a company A, let's say, right? Company A is close to your residence, okay? You have an alternate. You got a job offer from company B, which is, 50 miles away from your place, right? Now, company A is paying you $50,000. Company B is paying you $60,000, okay? So that's an incremental revenue. If you decide to go with company B, which is paying you $60,000, $10,000 more, that's a 10,000 increase in your revenue, okay? So that's an incremental revenue, also known as a, a differential revenue, okay? How about incremental cost? Incremental cost, if you are working close to your residence, which is A, company A, then you may not have to drive there. You can just walk there and you can save money on, let's say, gasoline. You know, you may not have to pay uh, the parking fees and stuff like that. Whereas if you drive 50 miles, uh, office B may be located in a downtown, which will cost you, um, you know, the parking fees. And also you will consume a lot of gas driving back and forth 50 miles each way, right? So that's an, in, it's an incremental cost or a differential cost. If you choose to work for company B, your cost will increase. If you stay with company A, then your cost stays the same. If you choose to work for company B, your revenues will increase. You're going to make more money. If you stay with company A, then your revenues stays the same. So that's the example, general example of differential revenue and cost, incremental revenues and cost. Um, in a daily life, if let's say you are a manufacturer of a hard drive um, and then you are selling hard drives to external parties other than Dell, and then Dell comes, Dell says that all the hard drives that you're selling it to external parties, I can purchase you for $100,000 and you don't have to pay any transportation costs, right? And to other parties, you are selling it for $120,000, but you are also paying the transportation costs. So you are making more money there 
that's a differential revenues, right? Because if you sell it to external parties, you can sell it for $120,000. To Dell, you will sell it for $400,000. Right, so that's a difference in revenue. Also, there is a difference in cost because if you go with a Dell, you will have you will not incur the additional transportation cost that you are incurring when you are selling it to the other external parties. So that's a difference in cost, differential cost, right? For you know manufacturing example perspective. Now, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is benefit foregone. Okay, something you gave up to do something else. So if you gave up working on company A from our first example, right? You have choice to work for company A or you have a choice to accept a job from company B. If you accepted the job for company B, you gave up company A's job. So that's the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost for working for company B is giving up your job at company A. So that's benefit foregone or opportunity cost. Or you can also say that you gave up your school to work, right? So opportunity cost of working is giving up a school or you gave up your sleep to work. So opportunity cost is sleep that you gave up to work. Or if you decide to go to school, you give up your job, then opportunity cost of going to school is you gave up your work, okay? Or the amount of money that you are making on that work. So that's the examples of opportunity cost. And then sunk costs. Sunk costs are the costs that you incur in past and shouldn't affect your decision. So for example, if you know you have to decide what employer you're going to work is going to increase your revenues, like you know, your income or your cost, because you're going to drive more or less. Uh, but if you have already bought a car and you have already paid for your car, it's sunk cost. It doesn't matter you choose to work for employer A or B, right? You drive your car to employer A or drive to B. You're, you already paid for your car. So that's some cost. It shouldn't affect. Yes, if you didn't have any car before, but now if you work for employer B and you have to buy a car, then it's not some cost. Then it would be a differential cost. But if you already had a car, then it's considered as a sunk cost. Similarly, if you um, were producing hard drives already and you were selling it to other external parties and not Dell, and you know you accepted the offer of Dell and stopped selling it to other parties and you started selling everything to Dell, then your past cost in this case would be the rent or lease that you're paying on the factory building, regardless of whether you sell it to um, you know, the other external parties or Dell, you already paid the lease, you already signed the lease, you already paid, right? Uh, your monthly payment. So it doesn't affect, it shouldn't affect your decision. That's your sunk cost. Relevant costs and irrelevant costs and relevant revenues and irrelevant revenues. So relevant costs are the costs that are avoidable if you choose the other alternative. So our first example, working for job A and for job B, you know, what kind of costs are avoidable? So the cost that can be avoidable is the parking cost that you have to pay if you if you work for a company B as state that's located in downtown. You have to buy a parking permit. You also have to uh, consume a lot of gasoline driving 50 miles each way. So that cost could be avoidable if you keep working for company A. So that's a relevant cost and avoidable cost, right? Uh, similarly, for in our example of the hard drive, if you decide to sell it to Dell and you stop selling it to other external parties, you can sell the amount of transportation costs that you were incurring when you were selling it to external parties because the Dell says that they will uh, take care of the uh, transportation costs. So that's the avoidable cost. So that's relevant in making your decision. That's known as a relevant or avoidable cost. On the other hand, there is some irrelevant cost. So we come back to our job example, job A and job B. So if you decide to work for company B, what kind of costs are unavoidable? You have already bought a car, right? So that cost you already incurred, that, shouldn't, that should be irrelevant in making your decision. You don't have to buy the car from scratch. So those cars are unavoidable right? You incurred in past. 
or you know if you go to your work and every day before going to work you um, eat your breakfast at Starbucks, you get a coffee, you get a muffin or croissant, right? Every day, regardless of whether you work in a downtown drive 50 miles or you work, um, a, you know, close to your house and close to your resident, you still have to incur that breakfast cost. The same, then that's irrelevant in making your decision and that cost is unavoidable, all right? So irrelevant costs are sunk costs and future costs. They are the two types. The sunk costs, uh, as you know, those are the costs you incurred in past and shouldn't affect your decision. On the other hand, future costs are the costs that you will incur in future and should not affect your decision as well. The example of sunk cost uh, from our job example is that the car that you bought, you already bought the car, you have already made the payments and everything is paid off. Now, whether you go work for employer A or B, it shouldn't affect your decision. This cost is unavoidable. You have already incurred that, right? Um, and the future cost is something that you will incur in future. So for example, if you, um, regardless of you work for employer A and, or you work for employer B, you are still going to have a breakfast, right? You, you every day you go and have a breakfast at Starbucks, you spend $10 there, regardless of you working for A or B, then that's your future cost that you will be incurring, but it shouldn't affect your decision, right? Because you are going to incur that cost regardless. If you take our hard drive example, then the sunk cost would be, you already bought a machine for the factory. Now you already bought the machine for the factory, then it shouldn't affect your future decision, whether you produce it for, um, Dell or you produce it for other external parties and you sell it to other external parties, right? This is the sunk cost you incurred in past. The future costs would be something that you will incur in future and you will incur regardless of, you know, who are you selling it to? So if you are selling it to uh, the other external parties or you're selling it to Dell, you're still going to pay rent every month for the lease that you have signed. So the rent that you're, you're going to pay Every month is your future cost and shouldn't affect your decision. Okay. Uh, similarly, just like we have relevant cost and um, uh, relevant benefit, we have uh, uh, irrelevant costs, we have relevant benefits and relevant revenues. So, relevant revenues are the revenues that are avoidable, it means if you choose to do the other alternative, you can give up the and benefits or the revenue from the first alternative. So if you choose to go work for employer B, you're going to give up the salary that you can obtain from employer A. So that's a relevant in making your decision because you were making a less in employer A and now you're going to make more in employer B. You were making 50,000 uh, when you're working for employer A and now you're gonna make 60,000 if when you decide to work for employer B. So that's relevant in making your decision, right? Uh, and it differs between those two alternatives. Similarly, if you are if you decide you're not going to sell it to other external parties and you sell it to sell your hard drives to the Dell, then you're going to lose twenty thousand dollars because you were selling your hard drives to other external parties for one hundred twenty thousand dollars, but now you're selling it to Dell for twenty thousand the twenty thousand dollars less for hundred thousand dollars. So you gave up. So now the benefits um, differ between the alternative. Instead of making $120,000, you will be making less, $20,000 less, $100,000. So that's the relevant revenue example. That completes our uh, differential analysis. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.